Hi, I'm Alex. Me and my team created a game for the GMTK Game Jam that came 54th out of 5,477 games. And so in this video, I want to talk about how we made it. A game jam, for those unaware, is where a host will announce a theme for everyone to try to make a game around during a set amount of time. Time is a big factor in a game jam, so I'll keep it up there as I talk through how we did various things. If you want to follow me on the socials, you know, there's, there's the links down there. In my last and only game jam, I did it alone, but this time I wanted to join a team. Alone I have severe deficiencies. Okay, more to do with my art skills. But together with a team, I can create something that I never would have dreamt or that I would be contributing to. So how does one find a team? And also find a good team? Well, I'm not really sure what the magic ingredients are required for a good team, but I think I somehow managed to find one. In the GMTK Discord, there was a channel to try to find people to team up with. I reached out to who looked like would complement my skills the best, and we teamed up. Through him, we grew our team to the five core members of our team. These members were a AAA modeler, a AAA programmer, a freelance sound designer and composer, a film animator, modeler and rigger, and then me, with no prior experience in commercial games, although a strong computer science background and game jam experience, so just enough credentials to join the team. Now we have a team, how are we going to make our game? How should we coordinate work, communication and files across many miles? For files we use SVN as our source control method. So files could be easily shared while ensuring we wouldn't overwrite any changes a different team member had made. For communication, we would use Discord and basically stayed in the call for 48 hours, excluding sleeping, although I'll we'll get to that later. Through Discord, we could continuously share screens, allowing us to constantly check in on each other's progress while also getting help easily for any issue that we were facing. We used Unreal Engine, which I wasn't the most experienced in, but my more experienced team members, and of course, Google, would help me with that. Working in this fashion was super successful and we plan on continuing to use these development practices as we move forwards in developing our full game. Now we have a plan. What game are we going to make? We waited eagerly as many others did for the announcement of the theme. And so when Mark Brown said, The theme is out of control. We all first had some individual time in order to think up some ideas and think about where we could take this theme. We then, as a group, took turns in discussing these ideas that we came up with, riffing on them and just generally having fun with what sort of directions we could take this game. The individual time allows everyone to think up concepts at their own pace in peace, and going through all the ideas individually ensures that all voices and ideas are heard. The group discussion then allows these ideas to be brainstormed into their full potential. In this brainstorming, the game could be anything. It is an amorphous blob, but we started on our minds shaping it towards a ship management game where you must power up different systems like oxygen and lights while trying to dodge asteroids. How do you manage these systems? Maybe cables you have to plug in, or batteries that you must charge? That will make a lot of sense, but no. We use cute aliens you must suck the lifeblood out of in order to power up your systems and then have a cute alien generator so that you'll be continuously spawning these aliens just to kill them seconds later. Now that sounds a lot better. Now we have a game idea, it's time to make it. My first task was to make asteroids and navigation working, where random asteroids will be generated in front of you and you have to move your ship left and right to dodge them. First step, random asteroids, and for this I took the most simple approach. Have an XY range where you want the asteroids to go, choose a random value in that range, and repeat for how many asteroids you want. We want to make them move towards the player, and to make them infinite, loop back if they go behind the player. We also want the asteroids game to have a mini-map where you can see the ship and the asteroids. We decided to do this by putting a camera in the sky, pointing it down, and then rendering the output of the camera onto a screen. To make this look more like radar, let's use an outline shader, tune some settings, and ta-da. We've now got a radar. To dodge out the way of the asteroids, let's have a ship. Have two buttons on it, created by my team members during this time, and hook one up so it moves the ship right, and the other one to move the ship left. Wait, right, left. Moving on, let's test those buttons. And problem. The ship moves, but the button glitches. This was due to a coding assumption in the button that it won't be moving. This could be fixed, or what is probably easier is don't move the ship, instead move all the asteroids left and right. From the player perspective, the result is identical. This is the point where I went to sleep. I didn't get the most amount of sleep. I think I was too excited to start work on the game again. So let's get back into it. This is now sort of a game, but it doesn't look the best. Now what can I do as a programmer with no art skills quickly to make this look good? My answer, random. Random? Random. What does random do? Or well, we can go for random orientation of the asteroids, random angular speed. Already this looks a lot better, but I can do even more. 
using a shader, I can randomly offset the surface of the cubes, actually, no, spheres. And now we have, well, potatoes, really. They're meant to be asteroids, and they should look like this, but we'll leave them like that for now. But also what we can do is we can use some of the assets my teammates have made, and this makes it look a lot better. Talking about using teammates' assets, let's check up on their progress. One of my teammates has made our machine to spawn our little aliens. These aliens will later be used as our power sources. Another teammate has been making more progress on our cockpit. Now let's get back to the asteroids. Now we need a reason to dodge the asteroids, as nothing bad happens if you crash into them yet. So let's make it damage the ship. We make a large collider, and when it collides with an asteroid, destroy the asteroid and take damage on the ship. We want to make the system more dynamic, so let's make it so the player can repair the ship. Each time the player is hit, let's spawn some damage inside the ship, and then you have a tool to repair this damage. We store an array of these damage points, start them off as hidden, and display a random one when the ship is damaged. The damage can then be healed using a multi-tool. I implemented this pretty quickly, and then one of my teammates suggested making it so you have to hold down in order to heal the damage point, rather than just clicking. That sounds simple enough, right? Let's just skip forwards until that is done. Oh, that was never implemented? Well, that's fine, it isn't a required feature. Oh, you spent time trying to implement it and you never got it working? Well, that's fine. Wait, how much time did you spend trying to implement it? Way, way too much time. Like in a game jam, you really shouldn't be wasting this much time. As a programmer, artists rely on me in order to get their work into the game. This was an animation made by an animator that was created during the time of the game jam, but I didn't have the time to set up the logic for it to be used. There was music and sound effects that were also ready to be in the game that my sound designer created, and it wasn't in the game because I messed up by wasting time. So what happened? Well, when I was asked to implement this feature, it was around midnight. A time when I probably should have tried going to sleep after not getting much sleep the night before. Instead, I started trying to implement this feature. And it's a super easy feature to implement. Literally, I woke up the next day after the game jam, instantly knew how I should have implemented it. It would have been e really easy to do, but I was tired and I was trying to do it in a stupid way. And I kept on trying to do it in this stupid way. And I was so tunnel visioned on doing it this way that I was never able to realize I was doing it in the completely wrong way but I just kept on trying to fix it and I just wasted more and more time. Once you get to some point, looking at something more won't actually help you solve the problem. I ended up pulling an all-nighter, but looking after yourself physically is required in order to function the highest level mentally. This was my personal biggest regret from the game jam. Let's just fast forward past all that wasted time when I finally abandoned the feature, fixed the bugs I created while trying to implement it, and try to get back to actually contributing towards making the game. The thing is actually that fixing those bugs took some time. In fact, some of those bugs I didn't even catch and were left in the final version of the game. While I was wasting time, my teammate got our alien animated and look how cute he is. He's become our mascot and we've put him everywhere, even into real life by 3D printing him. Now back to my progress. So let's do some quick wins now. Screen shake on damage to show you've been hit by an asteroid. Super easy to do in Unreal Engine. Spawn some particles when the damage point gets spawned, so it's easier to work out that you need to repair it and where. Just use the default particles and make sure to turn them off when you repair the damage. Turning them off when the damage was repaired actually took some time, and there was a bug in the final version where it sometimes wouldn't turn off, so we'll say that's done though. We have a lot of systems ready to start working, but we don't really have a game yet. One of the issues is we have no win state, so let's say if you survive for long enough, you win the game. So let's have a screen in the game to display that to the player, along with the help of various other systems that the player has to manage. So the timer reaches zero and nothing happens. So let's actually have a win-lose state, where if you win, it's congrats for winning. And if you lose, then you die. Well, actually, you lose because you've died. But it's, it's the same difference. And at this point, we actually have a game, but it isn't a fun game. So let's try to balance it. I need to tune it so there's always something that you have to be doing. There's no one system that's too centralizing while also being possible for people to do. This balance is both a regret and something I'm proud of from this game. The regret is that it ended up being too hard for newcomers. Trying to learn how the game worked in the limited amount of time you had before you died was difficult, especially as we didn't have a tutorial. This, coupled with a long, unskippable death cutscene, made it frustrating for people trying to learn the game. I am proud of how fun it can be for people once they had learnt how the mechanics worked. We definitely did not make it easy for that to happen. Fun ended up being our lowest rated category, and this new player experience is a big factor in that. 
in game jams, people want to quickly try the game, understand how it works, and move on to the next game. And so you want that new player experience to be as smooth as possible. And then, after doing some final polish, we released, with our final upload being 10 minutes before the deadline. We ended up coming 54th in the overall category, which we're super proud of. We weren't chosen for Mark Brown's video, but he did get to play it and offer some feedback, which is really cool. I'm really proud overall of what we've created. And I know I could do it better if I did it again, but that's only because I learned from the experience of doing it the first time. So what's next for this game? We're working on rebuilding it from the ground up for VR, although we plan on supporting non-VR too, and we can't wait for people to see the next stages of its development. Join the Discord below if you're interested. If you have any questions about this video, the game, or just want to hang out in general, you can come check out my Twitch, or I've been streaming lots of my VR game dev every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.30pm BST. On this channel, I plan on making weekly devlogs, so if you could hit that subscribe button, or even that bell, if you want to check that out, it is greatly appreciated. You can also choose between pressing that thumbs up or thumbs down button if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now what can I do as a program? Oh, that's my fishies getting fish. Fishies getting fished? Fishies getting fed? Fairly cool. Ugh.